The British authorities were stunned by the magnitude of the bombardment. It had been difficult to plan how best to defend London against the V-1 without knowing the precise nature of the weapon. The main defences were based on dealing with conventional bombers. Huge gas-filled barrage balloons were erected. Their thick cables were designed to rip the wings off any flying machine that flew into them. They eventually accounted for 232 flying bombs. The anti-aircraft guns found it difficult to stop the smaller, low-flying V-1s. The British soon realized the best way to combat the V-1 was to concentrate their guns and destroy the flying bombs long before they reached London. Two new American defense weapons were also introduced. A radar system which plotted the course of the flying bombs, giving the gun crews more accuracy. And a new close proximity fuse in the gun shells, which exploded when it was within range of the target, turning a near miss into a hit. New strategy worked, and V1s were being shot out of the sky at an increasing rate. The Royal Air Force also had considerable success shooting down V1s. They deployed specially adapted Spitfires and the Hawk Tempest, their fastest fighter. However, because of its speed and size, the V1 was a difficult target. If you saw a flying bomb coming towards you, it was no good saying, oh, I'll get him behind it and shoot it down, because, in fact, you would never have caught it in that way. We had to have an entirely different technique of getting up above them, uh, then diving and with an aileron turn so that we in di dive virtually on top of them and then f flattened out behind them, and you, then you were in a position to, to shoot it down. If you got directly behind it, you had the heat haze from the jet, and all you could see was a couple of wingtips. But you'd pull up, pull into about four or five hundred yards and give it a burst. If an aircraft ran out of ammunition, some pilots adopted the highly dangerous tactic of tipping the wings of the V-1 to send it off course. I put my port wing underneath the starboard wing of the flying bomb, and I'm afraid that that didn't work. It just skidded away from me. And I thought, well, this is no good, so a change of technique. Uh, the next time I put my wing under and then immediately flicked my stick over, and the thing just catapulted into the ground, into a wood just outside Seven Oaks. By the end of August, only one bomb in seven got through to the London area. It looked as if the V-1 had been mastered. Of the 8,000 V-1s that were launched against London, 2,400 reached their target. The price of Hitler's terror weapon was high. A total of 24,000 civilians were killed or seriously injured. Three quarters of a million houses were damaged. Although the V1 campaign had failed, a second threat to England now drew near. A silent, deadly missile was about to be hurled at London. 1944, German rocket scientist Werner von Braun and his team had made great strides in rocket technology since their first successful launch of the A-4 two years earlier. Yet problems with the A-4's propulsion system meant von Braun was still unable to give Hitler a fully operational combat rocket.
In July, the A4 project came under the control of Heinrich Himmler, head of the notorious SS and the second most powerful Nazi in Germany. Von Braun had repeatedly told Himmler the A4 was not ready to use. But Himmler had convinced Hitler that the scientists were being far too cautious in firing Germany's new secret weapon. It was not yet fully reliable, and it, it was always a particular effort on von Braun's part to convince Himmler particularly that our rocket is not yet accurate enough and not yet reliable enough to be used as a real good and successful weapon. When Hitler finally decided to really use it as a weapon and to eventually call it the V2, it was not completely developed. So we should have had an extra two or three years to do final developments, and then the V2 would have been able to have really a very accurate, a pinpoint uh, a missile, which can pick out a building uh, in a, a city complex or ship at sea. After the RAF had bombed the original rocket testing site Pinamunda in August 1943, tests of the A4 were also being carried out at an artillery range at Blizna in Poland. The Polish resistance had been keeping a vigilant watch on the activities at Blizna, when during a test flight, an A4 fell from the sky landing on the banks of the river Bug without exploding. The Poles found the rocket, and before the German recovery team arrived, managed to hide it by rolling it into the water. The Germans, unable to locate the A4, gave up the search. Working under constant threat of discovery, Polish engineers supervised the dismantling of the missile before contacting British intelligence. The British desperately needed technical information about the mysterious A4. And on July the 25th, an RAF Dakota landed on a little used airfield in Poland to collect the components of stolen rocket and take them back to London. This vital new evidence confirmed the destructive potential of the Nazis' long-range rocket. Churchill was deeply worried. With the V1 campaign still raging over London, he decided to keep news of the new deadly weapon from the general public. With luck, the launch sites could be hunted down and destroyed before they could be used. With the collapse of the German forces in France, the Allies would soon reach the borders of the Reich itself. Hitler hoped to counter this threat by unleashing his new secret weapon, and on August the 29th, he ordered the A4 offensive to begin. The German army moved its A4 launch crews to The Hague in Holland, which was 200 miles from London, just within the missile's range. The Germans figured the Allies would be reluctant to bomb the Dutch capital, known as the City of Peace. The mobile launchers were hidden in the surrounding woods and then driven out into the open for firing. On September the 8th, 1944, the first A4 was launched against London. It reached a height of about 50 miles before falling at 3,000 miles per hour on its target. The whole flight took no more than five minutes. There was no warning. It came over and came down faster than the speed of sound, so that you heard the explosion from the bomb and then heard it come in a second or two afterwards. And it used to sound rather like a tube train coming into a station. The Nazi propaganda machine quickly dubbed the A4 the V2, Vengeance Weapon 2. <laughs> <laughs> 